Hello again fellow RVers. So today we're going to be talking about an intermittent starting problem that you might be having with your generator. Maybe it runs for a couple of minutes and shuts off. Now these generators are fitted with an electronic fuel shut off valve on the carburetor and it's designed to do exactly that. Shut the fuel off when the generator stops. Now like most electronics they're prone to failure. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it off, inspect it, check we're getting the correct voltage. I'll show you the plunger inside working and I'll even show you how to get out of a pinch if you're halfway up a mountain and this is the problem coming right up. Okay, so before we get started, I just want to make sure that you've already checked you have enough battery power. We've got fuel coming through to the carburetor, you've got a spark, and nothing's blocking the air intake. If not, check out this other video up here because that goes through that whole process. If you've made it here and you know you've got all of that working, then let's get this off and check it out. It could be the issue. And as always, if you're not sure, always start with the cheapest item first and work your way up. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is drain the float bowl of any fuel before we get going. Now, I've fitted a fuel shut-off valve for the beady-eyed among you that may have noticed because I like to drain the carburetor bowl when I leave the RV for long periods of time. There's fuel in it at the moment, and I'm going to assume there's fuel in yours, so I'll show you how to get that fuel out. So the first thing we need to do is take off the hose clamp. Just be careful in case there's any fuel in there. I'll just put that to one side. Now we're going to remove these two bolts here. It's a Torx 30. And this tray can just slide out. So now we need some kind of tray to catch the fuel in. We're just going to put the tray underneath here. And we're going to undo this big screw at the bottom. This will drain the fuel out of the float bolt. So when we take it apart, we don't make a mess. Okay, so once that's drained, make sure we do the screw back up again. We don't want to leave this open. And we can see there's a fair bit of fuel in there. So this is the very reason some of these fail in the first place. This fuel, of course, just evaporates into the atmosphere because the carburetor is open. Unlike a fuel injection system, which is sealed, uh, this just evaporates and, and leaves a sticky mess once it's gone. So the next job, is taking off the earth cable. Torx 30 again. And also we'll remove the starter switch out of the way. So that's one bolt Torx 30 around the side here. This just gives us a little bit of freedom and a little bit of space to work. Now be careful that you don't press any of these switches because fuel is going to squirt out of there. I have the advantage of having the fuel shut off valve, so I don't have that issue, but if you don't, just be careful you don't press this and it starts. All right, so next, if you've got a long pair of pliers, this is the one everybody hates taking off, this wire right at the back. If you've got a long pair of pliers, you can pinch the back of it and just pull it apart like so. You can also put it back on the same way. So the reason we take that off is because we need to get to this big nut here, which is the uh, solenoid itself. And we're going to take a 19 mil or a three quarter, whichever you have, and we're going to slide the two terminals through the ring end and get it up onto the nut. That way we can just gently undo it. Okay, you can see it moving. You can see the float bowl is free now. Once it's loose enough, you can do the rest by hand. Just drop the cables inside. You want those to spin around while you're undoing it. You don't want them to get caught and get damaged. So just assist it with your other hand. And once you get that out, you can see inside, there's the main jet. And when we pull the main jet out, it will leave us, it will, a little bit tight, it will leave us with a small crush washer. You can see we've got a, uh, another crush washer on here. So I'm just going to put that in the tray with the other one. 
So this is what we're interested in. And this is how we're going to test it. We can test it on the RV. And the reason we want to test it on the RV is because we want to also make sure that the earth is good and the power coming down there is working as well. You could take this inside and test it with a battery, but that's not going to prove if these terminals work as well. So we're going to do it right here, right in front of you. And what we're looking for is, let me just give this a little wipe, okay? This is the main jet, the, the, the copper part. And you can see these tiny little holes, okay? And then the main hole coming through. Now you can't see it right now, but inside, inside here, inside those holes, is a little plunger. And that plunger is sitting inside, stopping the fuel from going through those holes. So what happens is, when this is energized with magnet with a magnet the plunger gets pulled down and the holes now allow the fuel to flow through and come out of the main jet up into the carburetor so when these fail the plunger doesn't come back down it just gets stuck there so no fuel can flow through so we're going to test to see if this plunger is actually working but before we put all the blame at the feet of this poor little thing we need to make sure that we're getting power down the cable where it should be. So in order to do that, we're going to test to see if this has got 12 volts, see if we've got a good earth, and make sure that it's getting the best possible chance. Now, as you noticed, I've fitted a fuel shut-off valve, so no fuel can flow through here when I press the pump. But if you don't have that, don't panic. All you do is just take a rather large... Uh, Phillips crosshead screwdriver and you can put that inside don't use a flat edge because it's fatter at the end and it will damage the interior you can put that inside and you can screw that back up again I know it looks a little bit pikey but it works okay don't shoot the messenger that the reason we do that is because when you press the prime button fuel would squirt out of that pipe and that's not very safe so we blocked it off we can go ahead and get ready to test this so we're going to need a multimeter so we turn the multimeter on i'll put it up here so you can see okay first of all we want to check to make sure that the engine is earth now thankfully we have a live over here we can pick up off of the main battery terminal so if we put one end on there one end in the uh, in the engine we can see that we've got 13.2 volts okay so we know that we're good there so now if we just take an earth pop it on the uh, engine and then we can put the live in there now I've just put the live in the uh, in the cable that feeds the plunger and what we're going to do is we're just going to press the prime button and we're going to see if we get again 13.2 volts 13.1 it's close enough for me so that tells me that this has got power the engine is earthed and everything is good so if this doesn't work this is the problem we take our we can get to it by hand now because the float bowl is not in the way now bear in mind these are also shaped like a d on both sides so they only go in one way don't try forcing it in the other way you need to make sure it goes in the, the, the correct way if it if it's if it's tight flip it 180 degrees and it will go in so let's earth it and put the earth screw back in okay so we've got it set up now as if it was in the carburetor but it's not and the reason for that is we want to see it working with our own eyes so I'll try and hold it still and I'll try and show you I'm going to press the prime button and I'm going to try and show you looking inside these holes and you will see the plunger working so when I press the prime button watch what happens did you see it disappear and come back again I press it again and watch so you see inside the plunger is activating up and down 
So if yours is not doing that, if you press the prime button and the pump starts running and this inside doesn't move, then this has failed, okay? And I'm gonna show you now how we can get around that if you're halfway up a mountain and your generator doesn't work because that's failed. So, first of all, we'll take it back off again. Okay, and we're gonna break it apart. When I say break it, I don't mean literally break it. I mean, we'll take our 19 or three quarter, whichever you want, and we'll take our 17 or 11 16s, whichever you want, and we're gonna separate these two. Okay, just put the two wrenches together and just squeeze them, all right, and it will come apart. Hold this up. You don't want anything falling out when you take it apart. So we're just gonna gently unscrew the jet, okay? And there's another cross washer there. All right. And there's the plunger, okay? Just like so. Now, if this wasn't working, if the magnet was failed, you could just remove the plunger, put it back together, and put it back in again. Now, I don't recommend you do this long term, but if you are in a pinch and you desperately need your generator to work, then this will help you out until you get a new one. The only thing that happens is when this plunger is not fitted, sometimes you can get a little bit of a backfire, a little bit of run on, you know, put, 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 when it's dying, it goes put, 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 like so. Put, 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 like so. That's it really. It's nothing too drastic about it, but it is good to have it. Like I say, I have the mechanical one, which I like, but this is an electronic one, which does the same job. So if you want, you can remove that, like I say, and it will just, you put it back together and it will get you out of a pinch. I'm going to assume that you've already removed it because I'm going to put this back together now, but we don't just take the crush washers and put them back on again. We have to sand them down. Now, of course, we need to put it back together. This is where it becomes important that we take our piece of uh, sandpaper, 220 grit, it's quite sufficient. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna get, if you can see, we're just gonna get our, our crush washer on top of it, put our finger on, and we're just literally gonna go round and we're gonna smooth it out. The reason we do this is because these copper and aluminium washers are designed to crush up any imperfections along here, all right, around this edge, that connect up also with this one. Um, these crush washers are designed that when you tighten them up, they, they squash into all of those imperfections. And of course, if you don't put the washer, so it's, it's practically impossible to put the washer back on exactly the same way that you took it out. Okay, so just be a little bit patient, go round, make sure that all of the imperfections are off. I'll do the same with this one. I've got three to do. Now, just like when we took it apart, you can do the reverse. You can put one wrench on, you can put the other wrench on, and you can squeeze them together. Now, because it's a crush washer, you need to do exactly that. You need to crush it. But don't go too crazy, but you want to make sure it's sealed. That's that bit done. Uh, we've got one crush washer to go on there. And we've got one crush washer to go inside here okay if you were to push this uh, jet through there you could accidentally push that crush washer out the way and because it's up here like this you can't see it so what I like to do is I like to just make sure it's in there with a little bit of grease so it doesn't move and I like to gently put that in position first that ensures that it's already sealed and all we're going to do now is put this in and tighten it up so nothing can move. Make sure you've got your crush washer on there. Okay, and we're going to hold the float bowl up against the carburetor. 
and we're going to screw the jet into it. Now, even though it's a crush washer, don't go too violent with this because it, you will break it. You will break the main jet. You just need to nip it up. Okay, that's fine. Don't go too mad. If, if, if you see fuel leaking afterwards, we'll tighten it up a bit more. But we don't want to go mad with that. Okay, so now you've got that in. We can grab this wire at the back. Again, don't pull it too hard. Just make sure you grab it like so. And remember, it only goes on one way. It's like a little D-shape. But you can see it can be done. All right, keep that earth out of the way for the moment. Let's bring the starter frame back in with a switch on it. Drop it down into position. So we have one screw on the side. And then when you put the earth cable on, you want to put it on the engine, not this side. You want to put it the side of the engine. It gets a better earth that way. Okay, we'll take our little uh, cover, slide that down the back. Put these two on. Remove our screwdriver. Now, interestingly, I've got the fuel shot off valve, like I say, the manual one. If you are interested in fitting one yourself, I'll put a link up just now and, and, and you can go through that whole process. It works really well because it means that you can drain the fuel out of the uh, carburetor bowl if you're storing your RV for long periods of time. So I hope that was helpful. Please let me know in the comments below.